In this lesson, we'll learn how to handle touch events. On the screen, there are two display objects. When I touch and then drag over the first one, it disappears as if I'm erasing it. When I touch and drag over the second, it appears as if I'm coloring it in. So here is the code for the two display objects. The first is called foo and the second called bar. Now what you want to notice about bar is that I've set its alpha to 0.1 and that's because we'll be filling it in as we touch and drag over the object. There are two main ways you can handle touch objects. You can handle them on the objects themselves, or you can handle them with a runtime event listener, and we'll go over both methods in this lesson. First, let's cover handling touch events with the objects themselves. We'll begin by creating an event listener, foo colon add event listener. And then for the first argument, it's the event to handle here, which is touch. And the second is the object to handle the event. So here, foo. Now above this line, and it's important that it's above, I create a function foo colon touch and then pass E as the argument and E is representative of the touch event. Notice that the function name touch is the same as the event. Now within this function, we'll listen for phases of the touch event. We'll do this with conditional logic. If then end and we'll expand this. If e dot phase double equals began, then we're on the began phase of the touch event. Now there's also a moved and canceled or ended phase. We'll get to those in a minute. The began phase represents the touch initially touching the object. So what we want to do here is set the focus of the stage. The stage is represented by display dot get current stage. There's only one stage in Corona. Then we'll call a method of that, which is set focus. For the argument, we'll use the keyword self. Now we'll assign a custom property called has focus to this object, self dot has focus equals true. So what we're doing with this code is we're binding the touch to the object throughout its entire phase. This is so that just in case the touch goes off of the screen, or overlaps with another object, it still remains attached to that particular object. Now we'll expand the conditional logic. So above the end, else if, and then, and for the condition to check, self dot has focus. So on the began phase, we set has focus. Then when we move through, we will look for the object having focus, and within this branch, we'll create new conditional logic. If e dot phase double equals moved, then we'll do something. Else if e dot phase double equals ended, or e dot phase double equals canceled. And then we'll keep the last end. So if e dot phase equals move, that means the touch is currently moving, and we'll want to create the effect of erasing. So self dot alpha equals self dot alpha minus 0 0.001. So self here refers to the foo object. We take its current alpha value and we subtract 0 0.001 from it. When the touch is done, it'll hit the ended phase. And so we'll take the stage object again and we'll call set focus and pass nil. So this releases focus. Then we'll set self dot has focus equal to false. Finally, after all of this conditional logic, we'll go outside of it and return true. This ensures that the touch ends its propagation with the foo object, so that just in case there was an object underneath foo that wanted to receive touches, we would stop it at foo and the object underneath would not receive touches. We don't have such a case here, but later when we go over dragging, we will have such a case. Okay, so I'll touch foo and then move the mouse and it slowly disappears. Then release and then the focus has been released and it's been set to false. For the bar object, we'll use a runtime event listener. At the bottom of the code, 
we'll type runtime with a capital R, add event listener, and we'll listen for touch. And here we'll create a function to handle the touch. Above this event listener assignment, we'll create the handle touch function. We'll make it a local function, handle touch, and pass in E, which is representative of the touch event. Our code within this function will be quite similar to the code that we created earlier, except that we won't be using a has focus property on the runtime object. So if, then end, we'll start a conditional branch. We'll test for the began phase of the touch. Else if e dot phase is moved. Else if e dot phase is ended or e dot phase is canceled, then end. So because we're using the runtime object, which is a global system object, we're not going to set the focus to the global system object. So that's why we're not using the previous method, which was to call the stage and set the focus to the object. So in the began phase, there's really nothing to do here because we're not setting the focus. We just have it here for illustrative purposes. In the moved phase, we'll call bar.alpha and set it equal to bar.alpha plus 0 0.01. So we're taking the current value of bar alpha and adding 0 0.01 to it. In the ended phase, there's nothing to release, so there's nothing to do. Save it and reload. Now I'll touch and then draw the mouse over and it appears as if it's being drawn in. And I still have the ability to erase the foo object. If you're wondering what method to use, a runtime event listener or an event listener on the object itself, you'll find that throughout this series, I'll be using the latter, which is to attach the event listener to the object itself. And that's because we can use the self keyword in that case. I'll be going over the self keyword in a later lesson. This ends our lesson on handling touch events.